It's tucked away down a side street in Fredericksburg, out of sight from the hordes of tourists and vacationers. And up in the attic of this old shop, Del Benedict studies the curves, texture, and symmetry of what he considers nature's most incredible sculpture. I choose them because of their uniqueness, and I try to match these antlers so that they look like they're supposed to look. So they grow that every year? Yes, ma'am. This is supposedly the fastest growing, non-cancerous thing on earth. These antlers are growing about an inch a day, and they regrow them every year, every year. It is a renewable resource. This antler is also referred to as brown gold. His collection of brown gold begins each year in the magnificent mountains of Colorado and sprawling ranches across Texas. These incredible animals carry the headgear for a few months, and even though these days he buys some of his materials, Dell still wanders the wilderness, searching the landscape for the antlers that drop when springtime arrives. Those animals are, they're strong. They're, they're able to lay those antlers back and run forever. You seem to have a lot of respect for these animals. I do, sure. They make me a living. Well, it could be the antlers from a bull elk or a white-tailed deer, but Dell hasn't lost that rush of excitement when he knows he has the perfect pair in his hands. It's fun, I enjoy it. I, I enjoy working with the antler. They're a one of a kind piece. They all are a bit different. You know, they're like a fingerprint. I'm between four and six months behind, which is pretty much standard. So I'm busy. This, this chandelier I just finished, it goes over a dining table. So why do you have this one that you just finished? This one I just finished because the lady that owns it, um, lives in Marble Falls. Otherwise, there would be absolutely nothing in here that I made. There was a nice antler lamp sitting over there. And but it's guess gone. what? It's Somebody sold. It. Lady came in Saturday and said, I want that lamp. Okay. You make them and they go out the door? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Now, you want to make it look like all of these are just kind of thrown together, but there's a lot more work that mm -hmm. goes into mm -hmm. it. This chandelier will have nine lights. I do a lot of work for interior decorators. Interior decorators. This one. Want odd numbers, nope. yes, ma'am. It goes there. right here. Okay. And that's for reason for the marks on my table, numbered one oh, through five. Here. This this light that there'll be a light goes right here. It doesn't take long to arrive at the conclusion that making antler chandeliers and lamps must be a complicated, frustrating endeavor with no shortcuts or substitutions. Nature's cruel little secret is that there are no straight lines in antlers, making it harder to build a light fixture that is balanced and symmetrical with no visible electrical cords or sockets. Maybe that's why there's nobody knocking down the door to get in here and learn this awkward and arduous craft. This is a lot of work. Yes, it is. It's pretty labor intensive. Then why do you do it? I enjoy it. I've been a hunter and a fisherman all my life. So it was meant to be, I suppose. I enjoy it. How did you even stumble into doing this? Honestly, looking at the world through a Peterbilt windshield hauling produce from California to Houston. <laughs> by myself. I said, there's got to be a better way. <laughs> it gave me a lot of time to think. Yeah, I was making this stuff for friends and, you know, and somebody said, well, I've got these horns and you did a lamp for so-and-so or a candelabra or what, can we do one for me? Yeah. So that's where it started. I thought, well, I'll be busy three, maybe four days a week, which will give myself three or four days to fish or hunt or do, uh, yeah, well, that went away. This is what I tell all my customers. When I'm finished with your chandelier, if I like it, you're gonna love it. I've never, since 1992, had a chandelier brought back that someone said, I, didn't, I don't like your chandelier. The neat thing about it is it's a renewable resource. Out of all these antlers laying here on the table, not one deer got killed. 
you know, they shed them. And thank and the Lord they grow them back. Yep. <laughs> and you keep making lamps and, and chandeliers. I keep making and lamps and chandeliers and tables and chairs and yes. There's some sort of mystique with antlers. It goes back thousands of years. The Indians drew pictographs on the walls and caves with antlers. You know, after three decades in this old shop, one man sits alone at this workbench, a testimony to those random gifts from nature discovered in a remote and hidden landscape. Once in Del Benedict's hands, though, Nature's sculptures find their final resting place in the ultimate ring of honor. I'm not going to retire. Hell, I'll, first shovel of dirt they throw in my face will be when I retire. <laughs>